but a connection. And let's say that you and I made a connection as well. Okay, again, not a sale. Is everybody on the same page with me? Everybody's following me? I have just gotten access to 50 more connections. Does everybody understand that quantitative math? I didn't alienate anybody. I made 50 more connections because I showed them a value in doing business with me. I used the right perspective. And once we get off on the one-to-one, -one, which is we'll go into that a little bit later, is when we can really get down to the nitty-gritty and find out if our networks are going to mesh, okay? So, ooh, I keep stepping on the cord. So the one thing you don't want to do is sell the other person. Here's something else you don't want to do. Don't answer your phone. If I'm talking to you and you answer your phone, hey, I got news for you. You don't even know who's calling. And that person is more important than me. So unless your wife is getting labor or unless your husband is in the hospital, don't answer your phone. I will never introduce you to my client because you're probably going to do that to my client and that's going to make me look bad because I referred you in there. Does everybody understand that? Don't answer your phone during a networking event. If there's something important, what I do, I put my phone on vibrate and if I have to go to the bathroom or something, I check my phone whenever I go. That way I'm not interrupting anybody. So another thing, um, business cards with the lead. Now this one, you mind help me out with this one? Yeah. Thank you. What was your name? Leonard. Leonard. Thanks a lot. Okay, so here is something not to do. You do not want to go, hey, Leonard, I'm Steve Husky. Why, why did, did you want that business card? Yeah, not really. He didn't want it. I offered it up. If you want the business card, you're going to ask for it. If the conversation gets good enough and Leonard and I form some sort of business partnership, you're going to ask for my business card. Even if it's something like, hey, Leonard, I got to go, oh, oh, let me get your business card. You will always remember to ask for that, okay? Don't lead with your business card. Thank you. You can hold on to that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't do that. <laughs> the other thing you're not going to want to do is, and geez, I never do this, so I'm going to have to actually prepare for this. And I'm not going to actually hand these out, okay? Hey, I'm Steve. How you doing? Hey, I'm Steve. How you doing? Hey, hi, I'm Steve. How you doing? I'm Steve. Good to meet you. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve Husky. Nice to meet you. That is called business card aerobics, and you have just failed. Okay? This is not business card aerobics. Business card aerobics is not going to get you anywhere. You're hoping to make one or two connections. This is not networking cold calling. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Any questions about business card aerobics or about leading with your business card and why they're not acceptable? Okay, very good. Man, you guys are so easy. So let's move into a follow-up, okay? How much time do I have, Eric? Are we okay for time? Okay. Now, you've met this connection. Leonard and I made a connection, and we're going to go have a follow-up. There's certain times that are good to have a follow-up, certain times that are bad. The one time that I think is bad to have a follow-up, and this is just my personal preference, is a happy hour. When you go to a happy hour follow-up, there are so many distractions. You can't keep focused on this person. My preference is a mid-morning coffee, a mid-afternoon coffee, a breakfast, or a lunch, because people are more focused. Breakfast, ooh, those can be pretty rough sometimes if you're kind of, if it's early. Um, but lunch is great. An 11.30 lunch, get a table off to the side, talk to the hostess, hey, I'm gonna be having a business meeting here. Can you put me at a table that's out of the way? I've never had a hostess turn me down for that. So when you have the one-to-one, -one, 30 minutes to maybe 90 minutes, this is where the real connection happens. This is where you find out, how can I help you? What can I do to possibly strengthen your network and strengthen our bond together? So whenever you go to the one-on-one, -on -one, the first question that I ask whenever we get down to business, of course you do the form, you're talking personal and the one-to-one. -one. The first question I ask is, how can I help you? What's a good referral for you? That is important. If you fail to ask that question, and this turns into a one-way relationship where you're giving me leads and I'm not giving you anything, I didn't gain access to your network. I didn't gain access to the people you know. What, why is it important to gain access to someone's network? Does anybody know that? Can you answer that for me, anybody? That's exactly right. And also, 
When you go into a sales process, an effective salesperson closes about 50% of business. If you get a referral, you're probably going to close about 90% of business, way over 90%, like 99%. Because Leonard said, hey, man, this dude knows what he's talking about. He hooked me up. He got me a BlackBerry. He was honest. He told me where he could help me. He told me where he couldn't. And so he told his family to come to T-Mobile. And guess what? I closed that business. It's not a matter of, hey, what do you want? It's a matter of, where do I sign? When you get that kind of relationship with somebody, your sales will increase and the time you spent to get them decreases. There's usually an inverse relationship between the two. If you want more money, you got to put more work in, right? Or, and, sorry, not inverse, a, uh, a related relationship. With networking, effective networking, you can do more business with less work because you're closing more sales easier because Leonard sent his family to me instead of me having to go and cold call for three hours to find a business that wanted to close. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, everybody understands and follows me there. So the one-to-one -one is imperative. This is where the real networking happens after the event. Um, now, what you wanna do is you want to find out if your network is relevant. Just because you get in a one-to-one -one with someone doesn't mean that your network is gonna be relevant with theirs, okay? And again, this, this transcends industries. Do they understand how to get, give you access to their network? There are some people who don't understand playing catch. These certain people want to take all of the leads that you give them and just keep them. That's fine. That's what networking events are for. You go find someone else who you can play catch with, who will reciprocate the leads, who does wanna reciprocate business. That's how you make your network relevant. That's how you close more business from a networking event. Now, let me caution you. Before you go out and you hit five networking events this week and five networking events next week, and you keep going with that trend, this is going to take six months to a year to build up. But what a great goal for 2010. I'm going to work 35 hours a week, and actually I want my sales to go up by 10%. That's a great goal for 2010. And you can do that by starting to network now. Matter of fact, um, I was looking at the Chamber upcoming schedule of events. Do you guys have this in front of you, the schedule of events? There were three events in particular that I circled. Um, the Business After Hours Mixer, those are always good. Now, you guys are going to be able to practice what you just learned here today in a real-world setting at this Business After Hours event. These, these things with the Chamber, I urge you to attend these. They're great. Um, the, if you go down the page a little bit more, on the left-hand side, you'll see a, an orange eggs and issues thing. The eggs and issues, they always have great speakers, and people who want to do business are there. Now, again, do not sell them. Meet with them afterwards. Find out who they know that you can do business with. It may turn out that they are the one to do business with, but you're going to find that out at the one-to-one. -one, okay? Don't sell them at the event. So the eggs and issues, that's a, those are great places to go. The good thing about breakfast networking events, there's one in Austin called the Metropolitan Breakfast Club. These eggs and issues are awesome because people don't go to these breakfasts to sit on their hands. These people are interested in doing business and they're interested in meeting people or hearing the speaker. Either way, you've got a common bond with them. And the other one I want to point out is um, my next speech, which is going to be above the uh, line there, says Steve's Little Black Book of Networking, on April 22nd. Um, that will be over group networking, which will lead into another networking event. Uh, just below the Horizon Bay, just below the top one, you'll see Central Texas Golf Fest on the left-hand side. I'm going to be discussing group networking and the dynamics of group networking at, this, at my next talk. So I will teach you how to talk to those four people that you may or may not know and how to get business from them without coming across as a sleazy salesperson. You've got to add value to their network. You've got to have a relevant network yourself. And you've got to speak to their perspective. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Philip Snyder mm -hmm. had um, written in the Nerd Crew. Um, I think it was in the newspaper, actually, in San Marcos where he wrote it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, he came to me and I asked him to introduce 
Yes. Yes, I agree with you. And would you guys mind if I took a few minutes? Let's do a real world intro. Do I know you? No, you don't know me either. Yeah, what I'm trying to express to these people, this is not fake. So we can still do the elevator speech, but let's do it in a real world setting, okay? okay. Hey, I'm Steve Husky with T-Mobile. Hi, Steve, I'm Diane Sanders with Cobra Rent. Oh, nice, what brings you here, Diane? Excellent. And what do you do with Colwell? What do I do with Colwell Venture? I sell real estate. I have the opportunity to uh, meet people and help them in their own venture. Wow, that's exciting. That must be fun for you. It is. Do you, did you hear her elevator? Did you get a chance to put your elevator pitch in there? Sure. When, I, when someone asks what you do, <laughs> elevator. That's right there, one or two sentences. Do we have any engineers in the room? Engineers? Engineers, oh, I love engineers. My dad's an engineer, my grandfather's an engineer. But when they, you're gonna talk elevator pitch, these guys have like a five paragraph elevator. Well, the reason my widget is better is because my widget has some coding on it. My coding is better than the other. It's more so, and you're like, whoo, okay, well, hold on. Um, so your elevator pitch, which you were talking about and how you said, I get to place people in homes and that's great. That was awesome because that let me know who you were. And that's the place to put in your elevator pitch. If you, if you come up to someone and I go, hey, I'm Steve with T-Mobile. Yeah. Did you know that we have calling over Wi-Fi? How did I just come across there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Exactly. And if they don't ask you questions, you go into the form. And eventually, they will. Yeah. It, it, Yes, and yes. When you ask for their card and say, I know it's still in the line of speech. That is a, a very good tip. There's also something else you can do. I, I didn't mention this in the talk. This is sort of a little trick that I do, but I'll, I'll go ahead and divulge that here. Um, if you, oh, thank you very much. Do you have a card on you? I sure do. Okay. So when we exchange cards, if I get a card from someone that I want, I will put it in my pocket with my wallet. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Diane. I put that in my pocket with my wallet because my wallet's valuable to me and nobody's getting in this pocket but me. Now, if I get a card from someone who just came up and went, hey, I'm Steve Husky, how you doing? That card is going in my left pocket and that card doesn't even probably make it out the door with me. I throw those out in the garbage on the way out the door um, because I don't want those people anywhere near my clients. So make sure that you differentiate your cards because in a networking event, even in a room this small with only 15 people, you're not gonna remember everybody. Gosh, was Leonard a good contact for me? Man, I can't remember. I got his card here. There was some sort of connection. I was gonna do something with this, what was it? So I urge you to separate your cards. Uh, ladies, I, you know, I can't speak for how you guys do it. Sometimes you got pockets, sometimes you don't. I've got a, a friend of mine who uses three different pockets. She's a lady. But uh, I just use two, garbage, and ones that I'm gonna follow up with. And when you follow up with those cards, 24 hours is the rule. If you wait more than 24 hours to follow up, with, with someone, uh, they have lost your value statement, they have forgotten who you are, and if you wait three or four days, now they know how you're gonna treat their clients. And again, this is a reflection upon you, so you wanna follow up within 24 hours, for sure. Now, did I address your concern? I agree with you that um, getting a card from someone is, is easy if you say, can I have your card because everybody, I'm sorry, everybody came here with cards, right? So everybody knows to give cards, the one thing you don't wanna do is shove your card in their face right when you meet them. And it's even okay, sometimes I've been like, I've said, you know what, I would really like to exchange your card or get your card. And I go ahead and bring my card out because I'm gonna give it to them, I felt there was some value there. But typically that's, you know, we've been talking for 10 or 15 minutes and there's a good connection there. Does that make sense? Did I address? Okay, good, good. Anybody else, comments, questions? Is there anything you'd like to see? Anything you feel uncomfortable doing at a networking event? Do you feel uncomfortable walking in? Yes. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. 
So um, when I, one of the first things I always ask people is what brings you here? And you're gonna get some people that go no, no, no. And every question is no. And you can't talk to everybody, right? Sometimes the question is just, sometimes you're just not gonna have a connection there. Um, however, one of the first things I always do is say, you know, what brings you here and who are you with and oh, how's that going? And just talking to you about your job and reading your cues as to what to talk about. Now, if I run out of things to talk about and you haven't asked me anything, that's when I go into form. I, form, you don't have to start with family, okay? I typically start with occupation and go to recreation. And then if I know them well enough, I go back to family. Form is just the acronym. So I will talk to you about your uh, occupation, who, what, where, when, how. How'd you get that job? Wow, that sounds great. Where do you work now? Where exactly is your location? And what do you do every day? Oh, really? Who is a good uh, client? Like, who, who are some good clients for you? That type of thing. So occupation. And then R, I'll go into recreation or, you know, in this case, relationship. How do you know this? Okay. So the recreation aspect of it, people love to talk about what they do for fun. So my typical lead-in is the very comfortable, um, so what do you do when you're not at work? And just pause. And they'll, th there's always an answer to that. Oh, I've got dogs. I've got kids. I've got, really, you got kids? Tell me about them. And then you lead into something else. So I usually start with O, R, and then F, M. It's that kind of, but or from doesn't really make a good acronym. <laughs> Is there anything, did that answer your question or do you want me to go more into it? Okay, good. Anything, yes, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You're exactly right. Um, the, the more you do it, you know, with anything, you, know, you learn to swing a baseball bat. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it, and the more comfortable it becomes for you. The, the only thing I would caution people against, I have done this wrong, okay? I have done this, I started off doing it wrong. My boss, the same baloney boss, told me that I should go out and network, 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 and he really pushed me to go to six or seven events a week. Man, that was way too much when I was building my network. You, right now, I attend about three events per week. That's um, two groups, and then I'll typically find one networking event per week to throw in there. That is a really good number for me, for my network. For some people, um, like especially a real estate agent, for some people or insurance, um, networking might be more towards one big intimate group. Um, it's all kind of a feeling, but the only thing I would caution you against is networking too much. What you said about networking is great. Um, don't do it five to six times a week, though. That's too much, and you'll actually notice that you're doing more work for less results because networking takes time to pay off. These people have to get to know you. I just met you, Diane. I don't know you well enough to give you a referral. I'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one with you and discuss that, but that's probably still going to get one referral, maybe two if it's a really good one-to-one. -one three, four months down the road, we may have an open book. A client of mine is a client of Diane's. I know Diane, I trust Diane. You know what, I eat breakfast with Diane every Thursday. And so yeah, I can trust Diane. And do you see how, what I'm talking about? You have to get up on that trust relationship. I'm gonna talk about that in, at the next um, seminar, the trust curve, how to get up on the trust curve. Um, just like I quantified, you know what, I wanna talk about your promotion thing too, how to quantify that. Just how I quantified um, in here, um, various things about networking in terms of um, selling to people and alienating people and getting in someone's network, you can also quantify a trust curve. A trust curve takes time, it takes attendance, and it takes referrals. And um, it's a three-dimensional matrix, and I'll show it to you and make it really simple at the next meeting. So getting up on the trust curve will really help your networking. Um, yes, ma'am.
anyone you meet, you can network with. I get, I get business all the time just because I'll be standing in line and I'll say, man, this is a long line, isn't it? Gosh, I got to get back to the office. How about you? You just open the door. And it's just conversation. That's exactly what you're saying. You can network with anyone. The structured events are great because if you go into a room with a structured event, you can talk to anybody in that room because everybody came for the same reason. Nobody came to buy from T-Mobile. Everybody came to network and to grow their business. So you've always got that common bond with people. Now I want to talk a little bit about, this is a little bit of um, promotion stuff. It'll be real quick for, for those of you who are already the boss. Promotion. There's a quantitative formula for promotion that I read in a book once, and I fully, I firmly believe it. I got uh, four promotions in five years with Continental Airlines, and uh, I use this all the time. It's called PI, okay? Um, influence and, oh my gosh, I don't have that stuff with me. It's, uh, you know what, I'll email it to you. Um, it is, that's exposure, what is P? Does anybody know what PI is? Has anybody read that book? John, uh, no. I'll talk to you after the event. <laughs> Caught me off guard with that one. Um, anybody else? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ooh, you know what? I sent my sister over to Gary Job Corps, and those people just bashed her down, and it really wasn't very good for her. Oh my God. Just destroyed yeah, her self-esteem. <laughs> That's why I have a hard time. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So, okie dokie. <laughs> okay. So, recovery. Are you out of tape, Jason? Okay. So, recovery. This would be a customer service recovery situation, and actually... Um, you can take this person and turn them into a lifelong customer, and it's really easy. You can do it in about five minutes. You need to empathize with them, right? Oh, I'm really sorry. Ask them a couple of questions about this. This is not the right venue to discuss this, and tell them that. Listen, I would love to discuss this with you. This is a problem for me because I am the, what do you do there? Trainer. I'm the right. trainer at Gary Job Corps, so you know, I may need to do some training, and I do want to hear your concern. Can we set up an appointment for me to hear your concern? take it to later. Whenever you hear the concern, be real and be empathetic with it. And I had a client just yesterday who's an international business consultant who told me he hated T-Mobile. And at the end, he ended up giving me a referral. And it's not because of any magic I did. It's because I said, look, I, I will be your point of contact. I want to help you with this. I was empathetic and sincere and he helped me. Or I'm sorry, he referred me some business. So my tip when someone is being negative is to uh, you can counter it with body language. First off, you don't want to go negative with your body language if they're going negative, because that just builds a boiler pot. One of the things I do if someone's going negative is very much this. I'm very passive right now. I'm not going to harm you at all. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Um, sometimes Gary Job Corps, you know, in the past has had a, a reputation of that. I'm trying to change that. I'm the trainer there. Um, is there something that I can help you with? That, that's something that I do. Does that help? Or Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anything you feel comfortable, uncomfortable with? Okay, yeah, there's been a lot. Well, thank you guys for coming. Now, the next one is going to be groups, and the group dynamics is going to be um, pretty in-depth of when you get into a group, that's where you build your business. That's where you get referrals every week. The networking events are going to take time to build vendors. The groups is going to take two to three months if you do it right. The one after that is going to be how to manage your database. You've got these 150 contacts. You got A contacts, you got B contacts, you got C contacts, and you got delete. And I'm going to tell you which ones are A's and which ones are delete. Okay? Thank you, guys. I sure appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs>